Chapter 6 will be one of five chapters where we will be talking about the Baroque period. And in this particular chapter, we will be going into the vocal style of music known as opera. Now, the Baroque period is a time where uh, arts and music really take a big leap and a big change in style. You can read more about this in your book. But the Baroque period is uh, specifically identified from the differences in architecture to visual arts and the musical arts, which, of course, we'll be discussing in this chapter. Now, in this slide, we explain the various purposes and uh, characteristics of Baroque music, um, music composed for and performed for by the aristocracy. All right, we still have music that is influenced by the rich. They're the ones that are commissioning these pieces of works and um, having concerts in their own homes, in their palaces, in their mansions. Um, we also have songs that are performed in, uh, in the bars, in the taverns, and on the streets. Uh, the characteristics of these pieces of music is that we see a lot of flowing from note to note. Constant motion is used in this uh, type of music, which we will hear in various examples in vocal and instrumental music. They also started to work on co contrasts of dynamics, very loud sounds to very quiet sounds. And uh, again, we will see that in various examples later in this chapter and the following chapters. So in this chapter, we are talking about opera. An opera began in Italy in around 1600, and it was started by a group known as the Florentine Camerata, a group of scholars and musicians who decided to add melodies, add music to the Greek dramas, the plays, the stories um, from Greek uh, mythology and Greek origins. And once they did that... They, uh, they basically came up with the style of opera, of adding music to a theatrical work. So we have several musical styles to discuss in this chapter, the first one being monody. And this is one of the first examples of homophonic singing in, or homophonic texture, in, uh, in Western music culture. And monody involved a solo singer, and an accompaniment, which again is the most basic form of homophonic texture we have. Now that accompaniment was often, uh, the accompaniment that was often used is called basso continuo. And basso continuo was a form of shorthand music writing uh, that a composer would use to tell a musician what the bass note of the chord that they were playing would be, as well as how to play the chord for that particular part of the music. Now this style often required two different musicians to play the accompaniment. One of those musicians, one of those instruments would be a bass instrument, often a cello or a bassoon, something that could play the bass note by itself. The other instrument would be some instrument that could play chords, something like a lute, which is an older guitar, or a keyboard instrument like a harpsichord or an organ. Between these two instruments, the, the accompaniment part would be complete. We would hear the bass part as well as the chords. I usually like to mention that this is very similar to music that we have today in a rock band, for example. We have an instrument, like the bass, playing our bass notes, and we would have a guitar playing the chords. And that style of accompaniment started in the Baroque period. Now, the three vocal styles that we will be studying, not just in opera, but in many different genres of music, um, include recitative, arioso, and aria. And we will focus mo mostly on recitative and aria in this course. Now, in, a, in an operatic setting, there is a dialogue in the uh, theatrical performance. However, they do not stop singing in opera, much uh, different uh, from what they do in a musical, for example, in today's musical theater. So the performers in an opera would sing 
their dialogue. And recitative is a very rhythmically flexible way that the singers would move the plot along and continue their dialogue. So recitative is speech-like. It usually has very little accompaniment so that the singers can sing freely without much, uh, without much meter to bring them down. On the other side of the slide is the aria, which is the biggest focal point of an opera, a major piece of work that uh, is a song that can stand out by itself and usually has the full accompaniment of the orchestra or whatever is accompanying the, the opera and uh, is the main vocal style of this genre of music and a few other genres of music as well. In between those two styles is Arioso, which is a little bit more lyrical than recitative, but not quite as lyrical as an opera. The melodies were still more, uh, were more distinct and expressive than just the dialogue, but they weren't quite um, a piece of music that could stand alone like an aria could. Also included in uh, vocal styles in the opera, again, as well as other genres of music in the Baroque period, um, are the chorus. And I often talk about opera being the beginning of musical theater. And if you're familiar with uh, musicals, you know that there are choruses involved as well. And that started with the opera, a group of people who often sing a homophonic texture um, and provide a, lo a lot of vocal support to the piece of music. Moving on, we have um, some opera composers that you can read about in your book, uh, starting with Jacopo Peri, who was the uh, first composer of opera, or uh, has the earlier surviving opera from the Camerata. Uh, it was almost entirely made up of recitative, and uh, that first opera was called Eurydice. Now, our first known female composer was Francesca Caccini, and you can read more about her in your textbook. Now, the first master of opera was Claudio Monteverdi. And this is a uh, composer whose name uh, you may recognize from previous chapters, as uh, he was alive during the Renaissance period, as well as the Baroque period. And uh, at, he composed several madrigals, again, that we heard in the last chapter, but uh, his opera, Orfeo, in 1607, introduced opera as a major art form. It added costumes, staging and lighting, and uh, a much bigger orchestra to make it the first major piece of work in the opera genre. We will listen to um, a, an excerpt of Orfeo. Um, you can click on the link to find that excerpt, but this is part of the, uh, this, this demonstrates the homophonic texture that we would hear in a Baroque opera featuring a tenor soloist with, again, that basso continuo part, a, an organ and a lute providing the accompaniment. Just a bit about the culture around the opera. Um, the audiences that um, would go to see these pieces of music were generally more wealthy. Um, operas were still fairly expensive to... Um, to view and, and to enjoy. Um, and uh, they this started in Italy, and as it spread across Europe, other operas were composed in various languages, performed in the vernacular, the language of the area. Which takes us to another composer, Henry Purcell, who was a, an opera composer um, in England, who who wrote the first English opera known as Dido and Aeneas. 
So when we listen to that musical example, you will hear you will hear an opera in English in a language that we can understand. A link to your second example is down below, and you can hear uh, Thy Hand Belinda and When I Am Laid in Earth, which are um, examples of recitative and arias uh, found in that opera. Other Baroque opera composers that you can read about in your book are George Frederick Handel and Jean-Baptiste Lully, both masters in their own uh, countries, England and France. And uh, again, you can find more information about them in your textbook.